Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking at a 1997 Subaru Sambar. This one here, five-speed manual, four-wheel drive, rear engine, four-cylinder, which is kind of neat for a K car. Usually they're a three-cylinder and then have engine in the middle or in the front. This one, uh, 29,700 original kilometers. That is not a rollover on a five-digit. That's the authentic mileage on this one. And it's an auction grade 4B. That was This was bought from auction... Uh, here in Japan, of course, for export over to the USA. Okay, it's screaming because the door is open. And uh, have a listen at the engine. Nice and good engine. Pull that key out so it stops screaming. Okay, so this is going to be a post-purchase auction video where we're going to showcase the condition of it before we export it. This is not for sale. It is already bought from somebody. We do auction purchasing direct for people. And uh, this is one of them. This is just an example. So let's go ahead and translate this inspection sheet. It's a 1997 Sambar truck, four-wheel drive, SDX, 660cc um, engine there, four-cylinder, auction rate four, interior B, 29,700 kilometers. We got kind of some breeze going. Pushing my hat. Bought the hat specifically for this job so I can keep out of the sun because now it's gotten intense. Um, Four-wheel drive, purchased from user. It's September and it's still 39 degrees right now. Wow, feels like 39 because of the high humidity. Spare key, okay, it's gonna be sent to us in a package. Okay, interior dirty and scratched. Engine oil leak. Now I highlighted this one in yellow. Engine oil leak is something you wanna watch out for because it can prevent shipping. The engine on this one is in the rear. And there are no leaks that come down that are visible. Nothing underneath. There is a little bit of oil on the sump. Right there. I don't think it's enough for shipping and I think it's just your average oil leaks from a car. I don't think it needs to be fixed, but of course it can be if you want it to be fixed. I personally wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, bed scratch dented and, and some rust in it. Underside has been painted and then the body has an AU3 right here, which is noticeable. A2, which is semi-noticeable, but the AU2 over here, I didn't notice, and the U2 on the roof. Well, the roof's already up so high, it's a little bit uh, difficult to see up there. Then U3 on the back, I didn't see at all. So it is in better condition than I expected it to be, which is always a good thing. We did have an extra question here about uh, does the car need tires? And the answer is yes, the tires on it, although lots of tread on them, like 80% tread, they're an 11 year old tire. So probably a good idea to get tires changed. And yes, you can get that done here in Japan before we export the vehicle, if you want to. Of course, you got to pay for whatever costs of tires and labor and whatnot. So K trucks come in all sorts of different conditions. Some of them higher mileage, some of them lower mileage. Some of the lower mileage ones are a little bit rough. And the reason being is that these are strictly utilitarian vehicles. Utility vehicles? Utilitarian vehicles? I don't know the right word for that. Anyways, they're, they're work trucks. They're only ever bought as work trucks. Nobody here in Japan ever buys one of these for just a personal vehicle, especially when you can get something like the van version. Some people do buy those just for, you know, driving themselves around, but the trucks, no, these are just bought for working. Some of them are in work sites where they accumulate very low mileage, but the truck is still used to transport goods around. That can leave some of them worn out even at low mileage. I have to say this one's in pretty good condition, all things considered. The mileage, 30,000 kilometers after 20 years. That's barely 1,000 kilometers per year. And it is good, in good condition. I think that uh, the person who bought this is gonna be pretty happy about it. So let's go over some details, take a look at this. That's an old style license plate. They don't have that style anymore. And that means that the last time this changed title was before the year 2000, so. 20 plus years of the same owner, which is a nice little positive. Um, let's go over some of the defects. The windshield wipers have some peeling paint. Not too bad. There's been a coating put on for the headlights, but that coating has turned yellow. You can sand that off. The front bumper is uh, an unpainted front bumper, and it's got these weird swirly marks that you get over time. Uh, you can either paint that, there might be something you can do to get rid of those swirly marks. I think I heard like heating it up with a heat gun can work, but I don't know if it's true. 
This one looks like it was used as a JA vehicle. JA is like a, they're an organization here in Japan that kind of require all agriculture to be sold through them because they have exclusive deals with like supply networks. They are very powerful. They own their own bank here. They have JA headquarters in every city. They're big. Are they nefarious? I don't really know, but any big corporation like that that has price controls, I'm a little bit worried about. So, J, A. Okay, it has these uh, metal things here for the door windows, the, the visors, I guess. A few scratches on the door mirrors, and these are manual fold. Oh, I just noticed this when I folded it. It has a crack there. Okay. Coming down here, here's your U3. Like I said, that one is very noticeable. Now that's really the worst of it. Um, these side uh, side things, and these fold down. Let me just show you this. So this is the reason why these are great. That folds down. Now that's only like 60 centimeters off the ground. So you can load it from left or right or back, anything that you want. Makes it really easy to get good use out of these. Hence why we don't have American pickup trucks here in Japan. I guess size is probably the biggest thing, but an American pickup truck is just not useful for most types of work that a K truck is useful for. Hey look, it's Grant and Mike. Peace homeboys. Okay, it has these chains for the tailgate. I'll just leave this one connected there. Okay, so the engine being in the rear, Subaru's the only one who does that. They have a folding tray that opens up and the engine is sitting on its side so the cylinders go sideways. It's uh, kind of a neat little design and a good package. And part of the reason why it works so well is K trucks are notoriously, like that one there is a um, high jet, Daihatsu high jet are notoriously only heavy on the front and not on the rear, which makes you get poor traction in the rear unless you've got stuff loaded in the bed. Having the engine in the back here makes the weight distribution better so that you get better rear traction. Did you know that, Mike? I did not know that, but that is a cool tip. There's a quirk and feature. I love those sunglasses too. You're so cool, man. You're gonna be on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. A little bit of an annoying problem, the skyline that we have in the lot has a like a, an aftermarket keyless like central locking system. The battery's dead on it, and as soon as I put the battery jump box onto the battery connectors, the car locked itself with the keys inside. And now because we have no space, we're moving some of the cars over to Coin Parking, and that's what Mike and Grant are here for, to move a Civic. Don't modify the electronics in your car, and you don't have to worry about stuff like that. Probably the, the biggest complaint I have with a lot of older Japanese cars is modified electronics causing problems. Anyways, back to this. Uh, we have a few minor scratches on here, not so bad. And then the back section here, which in Japanese is called the tree, has some scratches, but more so on this side than the other side, which again is pretty characteristic of these K trucks, especially, especially ones that are used in a work site that they use it kind of in the same orientation every time, you know, loading from this side. The top cap is missing right there. There's a rubber, after, it's an aftermarket piece or dealer option, but you can buy these aftermarket. Back to this side, here's our U AU2. It's not so bad as you can see. Okay. And then into the car for the interior. It's gonna be a short little section because the interiors of these are pretty small. I recommend K-Trucks for people who are 5'10 and shorter. Of course, you can fit into it if you're bigger. Um, it just gets a little bit less comfortable. And typically, these aren't comfortable for long drives, even if you are 5'10 or shorter. Um, you just don't have a lot of room in here, and the seat can't go back too far. They're really not made for market outside of Asia, um, or outside of Japan, really. I said Asia because I know that these are sold in other Asian countries. Okay, so steering wheel has just a little bit of wear, but it's generally really good. Seats, they are prone to ripping in all K trucks. I'm not sure why that is, but getting seat replacements is not that difficult. And then this one here is great. It's made out of what I would consider to be a fairly durable uh, material, but 
they do tend to rip over time. I think just because with a lot of K trucks, it's a lot of in and out and in and out and in and out. And I'm really dirty and my jeans are going to grip on here really well. Another thing here is you'll notice, oh, this, this is ripped. The door lights switch or the door close switch. Something you'll notice is paint wears off here and around here. This is because baggy work pants will wear all the paint off over the years. 25 years. I would have been 15 when somebody was buying this brand new. Okay, the four-wheel drive switch is right here. You also have an extra low gear, so it's kind of a six-speed. Okay, e-brake is good. AC is in this one. Not all of them have AC, and not all of them have strong AC, even if they do have it, but this one's nice and strong. Pretty clean on the interior. I like to see that. Okay, no bad smells. A lot of these have been smoked in, but luckily the fabrics are mostly vinyls and don't sink in the smell. There he goes. Off on an adventure. Mike's considering getting a car with a K20, so he's actually excited about driving that one. Okay, so I think we shot enough of this. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.